Hi there, I'm Cindy James. Welcome to my encaustic art studio. Today I'm going to show you how to make your own shellac from shellac plates. So in Canada, we've been having a very hard time getting amber shellac and I don't know why, but uh, the pre-mixed stuff has not been available. So today I'm going to show you how to make your own using shellac flakes and Everclear. All right, let's get started. I have some de-waxed amber shellac in uh, flake form and I'm going to try to dissolve this in alcohol. Now normally shellac would be dissolved in denatured alcohol or what might be called methylated spirits, but I've seen on some woodworking blogs that Everclear also works. Um, so I'm going to try with Everclear and I just feel more comfortable using something that's less toxic. Not that I personally would drink Everclear. 190 proof seems pretty toxic to me, but that's me. Okay, so I'm just gonna open this package. Now, normally shellac is mixed in what is called a two pound cut, which would be two pounds of resin to a gallon of alcohol. So because I'm not going to be using this as a wood finish, I'm not really worried about it. I'm just going to basically try to dissolve it and then worry about thinning it out later. Um, so a two pound cut can also be scaled down to two ounces of resin per cup of alcohol. I have this super old scale, but it um, actually works pretty good. Uh, the digital scale I have will only measure in grams. This has ounces. So, all right, so this is zeroed out. I'm just going to mix up two ounces of flakes. And the information that I read says to make sure it's airtight when you seal it. You know what? I don't know that I want that much shellac in case this doesn't work. So I'm going to do half of this. So if it's two ounces to a cup, I'm going to do one ounce to half a cup. this doesn't work, I really don't need a jar of shellac that's not burnable. Although I guess I could use it for staining the edges of my panels. Okay. Make sure this is sealed good and tight. And half a cup of alcohol. I'm sure the methylated spirits or denatured alcohol is much cheaper than this bottle of Everclear. All right, and I have a little stick here. I'm just gonna stir it up and let it dissolve. I know it will dissolve because I mixed up some last night to make sure I don't want to leave the lid off of this because my alcohol will evaporate. So I'm just going to put the, the lid on and I'll give it a little swirl here and there until it dissolves. And that might take till tomorrow. But last night I did mix up some shellac from uh, the garnet flakes I purchased. Let me see. So Lee Valley had three different colors of shellac available here. Uh, one was garnet and it's a nice dark 
amber sort of color. So I guess as the shellac gets more refined, it gets lighter until you can get almost completely clear shellac. So that would be what they call, I guess, in flake form, super blonde. But um, the clear shellac, it's not 100% clear. It's it has a little bit of a um, little bit of a color to it. So uh, I do have this mixed up from last night, and I'm going to try to do a shellac burn. All right, I have a fairly large panel here that I've been struggling with. It's got a lot of different things on it. I've even got some. bits of plant material rubbed into it um, but yeah let's see if this will actually burn when you when you do burn shellac you want to make sure you do it in a well ventilated area in a fireproof area and um, you're not actually going to light it on fire you just want to heat it so we're going to apply the shellac and then I'm going to let it dry and then burn it. We call it a shellac burn, but we're not really actually burning anything. Normally what I use is the foam brushes and you can save them until they dry out anyway. Usually what I do after I use them is I wrap them up really well in a piece of cellophane and um, they're usually good for a couple of weeks. So you want to make sure your shellac is in a glass container. It's nice, it doesn't smell like, you know, the commercial shellac that you buy is, is really unpleasant, I find. So the question will be, does this do a shellac burn? So I'm going to put it on varying thicknesses. It did seem to dissolve quite well. So I'll do some thinner, some thicker. I always found that the amber shellac gave a much nicer webbing when it burned. So um, we'll see if that's the same. It should really be the same effect, I think, after the, the alcohol evaporates because when you apply shellac from a can, you let it dry, usually about 20 minutes, and then you torch it. So, I mean, I'm assuming this should work, but we'll find out. So I've wrapped up my foam brush and I'll set that aside until later and I'll be back in a bit when this is dry. So it's pretty dry. This area over here is still shiny, but it's just tacky to the touch. It looks wetter than it is. Not sure. Oh yeah, I think you can see. But um, I'm going to see what happens when I burn it. Okay, so remember, we're not looking to actually start it on fire. We just want to heat the shellac to see if it contracts as it would out of the can. Oh, and look at that. actually works perfect.
So where it's more tacky, it tends to leave bigger cells. It will contract a little bit differently than where it's thinner and drier. So, but it worked really, really well. I'm pretty happy. So I'm checking on this shellac that I mixed up and it's uh, pretty gummy on the bottom. So I'm going to give it a stir and see if I can scrape some of that off so that it dissolves a little easier. I don't know if you can see um, how well it's stuck on the bottom, but it's pretty, pretty gummed up. So. I'm gonna just try to loosen that off. And also it's quite cold in my garage, so I'll probably take this inside because I did read that shellac will dissolve easier in a warmer space. But I mean, I live in Canada, it's winter time, and my studio is in my garage. So not ideal conditions for maybe dissolving shellac. So uh, I'll probably take this inside and uh, try to you know, stir it a little more regularly and we'll see what happens. So it's been about 24 hours and uh, it's for the most part it's dissolved. I had to add a little bit more alcohol to it. I don't know if you can really see. There's there's some residue still stuck on the bottom here. My garage is fairly cold. It's winter right now, so it's um, it was kind of cold out here. So I did actually take this jar in the house so that it could uh, warm up, and I also turned the heat up in the garage. Uh, I'm just going to stir it around a bit just to kind of, with a foamy. I used the foamy that I used yesterday. It's got the garnet on it, but I'm not worried about that. Be good enough to just mix it around, kind of scrape some of that off the bottom. Yeah, it looks like it will finish dissolving with just a little bit of encouragement. Not sure if you can see what it's just just a little bit stuck on the bottom. Let me turn it this way and yeah, you can kind of see here. Just try to scrape that off, but yeah, I have to say it's definitely not as unpleasant smelling with the Everclear. And I did look at prices online of denatured alcohol and you know, I didn't compare size necessarily. Honestly, for a jug that looked to be probably a similar size, um, it was just as just as much money, very similar in price. I think I paid $45 for the Everclear, and the denatured alcohol was anywhere from like $36 to $40 some dollars online. So given that this actually works just as well. In fact, I think it gave a nicer burn, really. Um, I would I would go with the Everclear. The other thing is that homemade shellac, um, once it's mixed up, it only has a life span of about, let's see here, I wrote it down, six months. The darker the shellac, it, it will last a little bit longer because it's, I, I guess, less refined. So the lighter your shellac is, the more refined it is. So it it has a shorter shelf life. So um, the blonde, I guess, will last about six months. And the garnet, which is the darkest, will last about a year. If it's too old, when you use the shellac, it won't cure. It will stay tacky. 
if in doubt you might want to make a fresh batch and that can happen even with the commercially purchased shellac it has a shelf life and yeah it doesn't necessarily last forever but I actually feel like this this came out nicer than what I had out of the can it's it's shiny as if it's wet but it's not wet and uh, yeah so it looks it looks really really good I'm very happy with this so maybe what I'll do is I'll try this the amber shellac because I didn't actually try the amber shellac yet when I mixed up the garnet I didn't really measure a two pound cut or anything similar to it so this this amber I initially scaled down to I guess what would be a one pound cut which was one ounce of resin to a half a cup of alcohol and uh, so yeah let's just make sure that burns just as nicely who knows it might not Definitely a lot lighter than the garnet. Now this, putting it over top of the shellac that's already there will soften that shellac. Kind of curious to see what will happen over this flower that I embedded. Okay, and it needs to dry, so I'm going to give it about 20 minutes and I'll check back. I put it on pretty thick, so it might need more than 20 minutes. The other thing you can do is you can add pigment to your shellac. This painting was actually given a shellac treatment with the commercially prepared clear shellac with some white pigment mixed in, titanium white, and it gave quite a nice shellac burn. But um, yeah, you, normally I find that the clear shellac gives a much smaller, finer burn. You don't typically get such big cells as you do over here. So I'm very happy that this amber shellac worked, or the garnet, in fact, I quite like the garnet. I may have to buy another bag of that. Okay, so this this is pretty dry right now. Um, if I touch it, it, it's not tacky. This blob here is a little bit tacky, but I think it'll be okay. So remember, you don't want to burn this when it's wet. It is flammable. And we're not going to light it on fire. We're just going to heat it. Hopefully this one, oh yeah, that works. That works great. But uh, I would say Everclear for the win. It works really good. And the nice thing about mixing your own shellac is you can probably play with the concentration of uh, shellac to alcohol and um, see what kind of different effects you might get. I could probably even mix the garnet and the amber together. That's a possibility. So yeah, definitely a viable alternative. So a few things to take away from this process of making your own shellac. And uh, number one, I would say, is I actually felt safer using my own prepared shellac with Everclear versus whatever is in these commercial products. Um, I, it was less smelly. I, I just thought it actually made a nicer burn overall. Uh, so I, I think even if the amber shellac becomes more available in Canada, I would probably still continue to make my own. I actually didn't mind that process. I just had to 
Make sure I plan ahead because it does take some time to dissolve. Uh, just a note for you is this, this is the new packaging that the shellac has been coming in. I, like I say, I have been able to find clear, it's just not the amber. So this is the newer packaging as of the time of this video. So um, just in regards to remembering that shellac has a shelf life. Um, so if you see shellac in this can, it's going to be a little bit older. There is really great videos from Alicia Tormey. This is actually where I learned how to do a shellac burn. She has a fabulous course on burning shellac and mixing shellac and, and uh, you know, pigmenting shellac. So I'll put a link in the comments below. Uh, absolutely fantastic work by Alicia. And uh, so also make sure you buy de-waxed flakes. I'm not sure I can really tell you why. It just, it's a, a more refined product. So I, there may be a difference in the way that it reacts to heat if it's not de-waxed. So I would recommend getting the de-waxed flakes. You know, I can't speak to this brand over any other brand because I haven't used any other brand of, of shellac flakes, but this one I'm very happy with. Uh, I'll also put a, a link to the Valley. And the other few things that I wanted to note is that, yes, you do want to make sure that you seal these very tightly because apparently oxygen or moisture will ruin the flakes as well. Um, once it's mixed up, it has a shelf life anywhere from six months to a year. And what else? Yeah, if you do heat it and it stays tacky and it isn't setting up, I would recommend you scrape that off your painting because it's never going to cure and it could compromise the, the painting. As always, use the materials in a safe space. Make sure you have ventilation. You know, you are burning a flammable substance, so make sure the alcohol is evaporated. And I have a fire extinguisher in my studio. I also have a ventilation fan and window. Um, that's my heater. It's in every video I, I'm in because that side of the garage is a mess. So I have to compromise. But uh, other than that, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. I, you know, I usually see any comments and I try to answer them in a timely manner. So I'm happy to help out. You can visit my website, CynthiaJames.ca and shoot me a question there. I'll also link the video where I learned this information about shellac. Uh, it was a really great video by Andrew Strome for Lee Valley. So it's more for the woodworking realm, but he does explain a lot about shellac, what it is, how it comes from uh, the lac beetle. So I found that very interesting as well. And I think I even have uh, a link to the blog where I read that you could use Everclear in place of um, denatured alcohol or methylated spirits. So in the end, Everclear for the win. I'm really happy with the way this turned out. So hopefully I can use it uh, in more paintings. So thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe as they say these days. So take care. Bye.